But yeah, it's been a pretty busy day so far for me. <laughs> All right, good evening, one and all. Here we go, Friday night. It is Juan. We are riding once again with Sergeant McHugh. It's already been a... Um, Sergeant, you were telling me it's already been a, uh, a busy afternoon. Yeah, it's been pretty busy today. It's been pretty busy. Um, unfortunately, we had a uh, sudden death um, pretty early right out of the shift. And then uh, about uh, 5.15, we ended up getting information that... One of our wanted suspects was uh, outside of his residence, and uh, myself and a couple of officers were able to go there and apprehend that individual. And in, in a situation like that, how important is it to find out, potentially, maybe they have a weapon on them? Oh, I mean, any situation that you're dealing with somebody or you're placing them under arrest, one of the first things you want to do is always form a search for weapons or contraband just to ensure your safety and just make sure, God forbid, he couldn't use that weapon on me while I was attempting to place him with the handcuffs or anything else like that. And it, it turned out that there was a weapon on the individual? There was, yeah. yeah. He, had, he had a six-inch knife on his person. How? Holy cow. And how did, did you see that, like, jutting out, or how did you know he had a knife on him? I saw it protruding from his uh, how? pocket. Hmm. Well, it was process of, um, I had grabbed onto his hand because uh, his right hand was uh, covered in a cast. Uh, this individual, he's uh, alleged to have uh, assaulted one of his uh, other roommate, not a roommate, but a um, neighbor over at one of our local manors. So I'm assuming he broke his hand while fighting this individual. Oh. So I had held onto that hand and while I was looking I ended up seeing the knife protruding out of his pocket. Now folks, again, it's Friday night. It's a beautiful night. We are in Cransford Island with Sergeant McHugh. It is Juan. And also, we have good news to report. Uh, a lot of people saw the silver alert, and, um, and, and I believe there is an update on that. There is. Uh, she's been uh, located safely in Nassau County, Long Island, New York. Wow. That is fantastic. Folks, thumbs up for the Cranston police. Nassau County. Yeah. That know, is. Right? That, that's. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to guess that's at least. At least three hours, maybe even oh. in traffic on a Friday, three and a half to four. It's got to be a while. So yeah. I end up working half a shift of uh, day shift overtime. So yep. I want to say that woman uh, was probably put out around 11.30 noon. And wow. Yeah, she made I mean, really good time. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's right near Hofstra. That's right near the Nassau Coliseum. Yep. Hofstra's yep. in Nassau. Nassau yep. Coliseum's there. So, but yeah, I'm actually, I, I did not expect her to turn up there. Mm. All right, folks, again, it is Friday night. It is Cranston PD Live. We're with Sergeant McHugh. We're right now on Cranston Street. Please share that you are watching. You can also, this uh, program, by the way, is dedicated to Jane Rice, who's recuperating. Special hello to Jane, big fan of the program, so big supporter. And we're glad to hear that uh, she is on the mend. So, again, it's Friday night. As many of you know, we've had the, the fires that have been going on. <clears throat> there was and a big one in Exeter, right? A huge one in Exeter. That does seem, from what I understand, that it's under control. Um, but it's been, um, it's just been so unusual, I think, as everyone realizes, uh, with the weather and then everything, uh, especially those. If you've seen, if you haven't seen it, folks, on the page, we were actually able to get some drone footage. We were the only news outlet with uh, drone coverage, drone footage of the fires and it's it's pretty spectacular coverage as a matter of fact so check it out it's right there and um and i want to thank some of the the people uh really really impressive coverage that were involved with that so again folks uh good evening everyone i just want to check that was um damian mark or mark damian i think it's damian mark he was the one with the um with the with the drone coverage. So again, it's Friday night, and it is Cranston PD Live. We are riding once again with um, Sergeant McHugh, and and Sergeant. Also, how has the week been? Just because um, 
It's also been school vacation week. Yeah, uh, day shift's been a little different without the schools and whatnot. And it's, you know, things tend to be a little more quiet during the day shift without the uh, yep. some of the calls that come in from the schools. And what about the warm weather bringing people out? Oh, there's been a lot of people out. Yeah. I mean, this is unusually warm, too. I mean, this, this felt like a summer day to me. Yeah. How much... Um, we can talk about, but how much? How, but it just seems to be the more people are out, the more there's um, either potential for either more calls or crime or people just. If it's eighty degrees, they're coming out. If it's twenty degrees, they're staying inside. Yeah, I would say that's definitely a, a true statement. Um, normally, our calls for service are drastically increase in the summertime, contrary to during the winter time. So, but. You know, I know normally uh, this is just about the time of year when people start to come out, but I mean, this was really warm today. How's the, um, has there been, uh, how's the ETV, any ETV sightings the past couple of days in Cranston? We know that last night they were on North Main Street, but I, I have not heard about any Cranston sightings. I've been off the last two days, so okay. I, I haven't seen anything okay. in our uh, daily shift bulletins, but yeah. I don't believe so. Okay. We'll keep our eyes peeled for tonight. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> and now, this is, uh, what section of the city are we right now? Knightsville. Knightsville. Okay. Very Knightsville. So, and that individual that had the knife, mm -hmm. um, he was then, that was an arrest, and he's right now in a cell block or being released? Uh, he was in the cell block, but... Um, He's probably being arraigned by uh, Magistrate Solomon, probably right at this time. So, okay. he when the when people are not on uh, bail or probation, uh, they are available to uh, get released. Yeah. And the the knife that he had on him, um, I mean, I'm going to say that that was that was a pretty that was a pretty that was not a pocket knife. That was a pretty big knife. Yeah, it was pretty big. So um, after I read his rights and I was talking to him a little bit about it, he didn't directly uh, admit that. He was keeping it on him for fear of retribution, but he did indicate to me that the uh, the victim in this case apparently was banging on his door and threatening him. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I mean, he shouldn't have been walking around with a, a knife like that. Yeah, that was a good sized blade. So, and that could have been a problem if if you had not seen that he in fact had the knife on. Oh yeah, certainly. I mean, I definitely don't want to bring him in the cell block with that thing. No. So, all right, so, folks. Again, Friday night. It is one. Also, I did want to mention uh, those uh, those wildfires. I I think they have them in Exeter. I believe they have them a little bit under control. So, but as as many of you know, it's been unusually warm, record-breaking heat here in the east. Good evening, one and all. Hi, everybody. We are back in Cranston. I want to thank Cranston Police, Commander Patalano, the Chief, and I'm fairly confident we're going to move into a rotation now of at least once a week we're going to be riding in Cranston. Now again, you can also, uh, remember, if you know someone, you can type in their name, they should get notified. You want to make sure you share the page. Look at that sky. It is it's, uh, fabulous weather. It's nice to have the cool down. Yeah, it, <laughs> I have to say, is, after though, working yeah. for half the day. Yeah. This was uh, this was this, this was like July heat today. Yeah, it was up there. I so well, it hit ninety degrees. Oh, did so it? I actually didn't yeah. know that. So, I mean that that's not April, you know. No. As someone that played little league, I don't remember ninety degree <laughs> ninety degree days um, like that. Now this is the Atwood Avenue area. Yes. Yes. Were any homes damaged in the uh, the wildfires? I know I, I, the last time I checked, and we will check, folks. I know they were evacuating some individuals and really? people, and telling them to go to the high school. I think just out of precaution. I don't believe any houses burned because there's so much woods there. A big part did burn, I think, for the night. And now that it's cooled down, they actually have a handle on it. Mm -hmm. So, and then it seems like it's one more day. And then it's supposed to rain on Sunday, but it, it is unusually dry in this heat. So, but a little bit of um, like a feel of California, a little bit. <laughs> okay. 
so the person, someone did contact me and they did see the medical examiner and um, that, that was, uh, we'll just say it was an untimely death. Yes, I yes. think that's fair to say. Yeah, fair to say. And the other news is the silver alert. That's, that's good news. She has been found. Yeah. Um, that's great news. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad I, I almost contemplated, like, okay, maybe I'll get some people to go search around Roger Williams Park. I'm very glad we did not do that <laughs> since they found her in Nassau, Long Island. Yeah, it would have wow. been way off. Yeah, would have been way off. We'd still be there. We could be looking for days. We wouldn't have found her in Roger Williams Park. I'm shocked the woman was from Massachusetts, so for her uh, to go south like that. Yeah. But, I mean, unfortunately, uh, she is suffering from uh, stage 2 Alzheimer's, so I'm just glad oh. that she was recovered okay. Yeah. And drove that far on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Sad what can happen to somebody. Do we know how or why she, or we don't know uh, any details on how she ended up down in Nassau, Long Island from from Cranston? No, no, no. She didn't have her cell phone on her, so we were unable to track the cell phone. Wow. So, yeah. The last time uh, we were aware that she was in Cranston um, was around 1230. Oh. And I think... If I remember this correctly, I think she was in the Edgewood area, Broad Street. Was, yeah. Yep. All right, folks, again, it's Friday night. We're with Sergeant McHugh. It's a lot warmer than the last time we rode with the sergeant. Yeah. It is. I think that was back in February. It was, February 2nd. That was episode 13. What are we on now? So we are... Uh, tonight, I think, is 18 or 19. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, then we, we slowed it down a little bit just because... The, the winter's tough, and then the weather, and it has to, it has to, th this is ideal conditions when it's dry. Mm. It's very difficult to do it when, when, Obviously. if it's raining, Not a fun um, job or it's if it's freezing, yeah, it's tougher. I still think we didn't get any significant snow this year. And, and that's why I think we have these wildfires, so. Yeah. You know. It's nice to see everything starting to green up, the weather's getting nicer. I mean, this is a little too nice for this time of year, at least yes. for me, but you know, it is good to see. Now, people are asking our path for the night. Are we citywide or are we just a certain area? So as a, uh, as a patrol sergeant right now, um, I don't really have any um, beat, okay. so we're, we're kind of citywide. Okay. So. But this is the Arlington section. Um, yeah. When I used to work patrol, I did a lot of work in the Arlington section, so I like to hang around this area, but uh, we will make our way throughout the city okay. during the course of tonight. Yep. So folks, again, we will be uh, citywide. Sometimes people have various questions. We shall see. But again, it's um, pretty enjoyable on this Friday night. You can also uh, type in where you're watching from. We started doing shout outs and then the list just became too much. But I do want a special shout out to Roberta, David San Martino, all the members of Team One. And then, of course, this program is dedicated tonight to Jane Rice, who was in the hospital. She's home, and she said, I want to get home so I can watch Cranston PD Live. So, so there we go. Now, have you done anything like this with any other police departments? Or? Right now, we're just focusing on Cranston. Okay. We may, and we've had inquiry, but um, we're going to walk first and then before we run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, now we've been covering a lot of different crime scenes. I mean, I did the bank robbery in East Greenwich Tuesday morning, then we had the terrible, tragic murder suicide in Coventry on Tuesday, yeah. and then um, we did the wildfires on. It's been a busy Wednesday, week. Wednesday, it's been a busy week. And then we had the gang shooting in Providence last night. So, um, and folks, there's an interesting story about who they arrested. For those that saw in Camp Street, I'll be posting that on petro.com. It's an interesting story about the individual that they did catch. With. There they are. There's some people watching. All right, so that's nice. Hopefully not following. Folks, you don't have to follow. You can watch from your phone, but that's very nice. Um, and then I do have an interesting story later, folks, over the weekend on DePetro.com of who it is that got arrested on Camp Street last night. If you saw that, it was someone with a weapon. And uh, he had a 
a Glock and an automatic on his Glock, so you could just fire it in repetition form. So they all converged. So that we also had a homeless woman that fell into uh, the river basin, RISD. Now we are on the Providence line right here. Yes, this yeah. is Farmington Avenue. Yeah. And then um, I know right now. I someone just said, "Is it?" I, I I'm going to defer, folks. We're going to wait for DEM. I'm I'm hearing some people are questioning that some of these fires. Um, I don't know is the answer, but I, I know people are speculating that some of them in the northern part of the state in Providence are starting from um, some of these homeless encampments that are popping up, so, and cigarettes, but I, I, I don't know. I, I certainly don't think that was the case in Exeter, but who, who knows what it is that may have caused uh, some of those things. always different. People like it. It's always, always entertaining. Which, which was that St. Patrick's Day parade in Long Island? No, Long New York City. City. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah. Now, what was that like? Oh, it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's okay. a really uh, it's a great experience, and um, luckily enough, um, Suffolk County Police. My father had retired from there, and uh, you know we still march with them. Yeah, and we still keep very nice. Alive. That's uh, a nice tradition. Since uh, my first year on the job, uh, they just stopped it for the uh, the two COVID years. Okay. So, but there's still it seemed like. It was almost back to being what it was before COVID, yeah. which is good. And there was a lot of other parades too. So I'm on the, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on the uh, Cranston Honor Guard team. Excellent. So we did uh, four St. Patrick's Day parades. Wow. And, yeah, it was nice. A lot of people oh. just back out and. Yeah. Uh, Feels good to be back out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. How was the New York crowd for St. Patrick's Day? I'm always supportive. Yeah, always supportive. Anywhere to get a drink around there? <laughs> plenty of places. <laughs> There's plenty of places. All right, folks, again, it's Friday night. We are riding with Sergeant McHugh with his Cranston PD Live. What part of the city are we making our way through? So we're still in the Arlington section, okay. so we're coming down on uh, Cranston Street, yep. Chestnut Hill. Two of them. Two of them. It is quiet for me. Yeah. So we're right by T. And that individual earlier, there was an outstanding warrant on that individual? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a warrant for uh, simple assault and disorderly conduct. I jokingly suggested, too bad we couldn't have delayed it, but no, that's just not the way it works. <laughs> well, no pressure. I would like for you to have been present. Yes. Sometimes, I mean. It went down when it went down. Yeah, yeah. You can't, uh, you, you can't kind of script this. No. Folks are looking very picturesque uh, sky on this Friday night. My goodness. It's so nice to put the windows down a little more. Yeah. Good. But it gets hot in this uniform and everything else like that. Yep. Plus the tactical gear, right? Yeah. yeah. How is the, um, what about, we haven't, 
smelled it just yet, but I would imagine now with the good weather, um, riding around the steep is definitely a, the cannabis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, most people will, uh, will have their windows down now. It's, it's a lot nicer, but I think for people that were smoking anyway, they would crack the window. So for people that drive with the windows up, they probably wouldn't be able to detect it, but you know, I always like to keep the windows cracked no matter what, just so I can hear what's going on around us. Sure. So, but sometimes, yeah, you'll, you'll get the, uh, the odor of marijuana if you're behind somebody. Yep. And, and that, that dynamic has changed. It may have been, well, how has that dynamic changed? I mean, now it is, it is legal. Well, marijuana is, uh, decriminalized here in Rhode Island, but driving under the Holy influence water. of it is still illegal. So if somebody is behind somebody and they can smell the odor of marijuana, call 911 and, and we'll investigate it. And, and what about ATVs? Um, should people call 911 if they see ATVs entering or riding through the city? Yeah, I, I mean, certainly, because in, here in Cranston, um, you know, we have a city ordinance to help combat that, and, you know, that shouldn't be taking place on the public roadways. I know Providence just started that new task force, so, yes. you know, hopefully that works out for them. Well, last month, that was that tragic crash, right, at Broad and Wheeler. Yes, yep. So, um, I was working that night. I was not on scene. Uh, Lieutenant Shore and uh, Sergeant Afonso went out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what else can you say? Completely tragic. Fortunately, uh, two people lost their lives. And, uh, Young, 20 and 21. Yeah, sad. sad. Wow. We had the, uh, the funeral a few days uh, after the fact at uh, Narda Lillos. Yes. And they were doing a procession. There must have been, like, 200 cars in the procession. It was huh. incredible. Huh. Well, I know that following the crash, there was then some of the vehicles, the ATVs were going out to the crash site where it's now like, it was like a vigil. Yeah. That was a tough situation. Yeah. I, um, I was on my days off during that, so I, I wasn't present for that, but yeah, it, it's sad. It really is. Yeah, we're back on Park Avenue. Yeah, we're back on Park Avenue. We're going to make our way over to Reservoir and we'll see how busy it is. Get a thumbs up from this guy. Yeah. There's a dirt bike right there. Yep. But he's not on the road. No. No. Nope. He's got it in the back of a truck the way it should be. Yep. There it is. Good. More of that. <laughs> Less on the road. Just too dangerous with all the cars and the, is. the traffic and whatnot. Yeah. Well, there was the, that recent incident right on the Providence Cranston line, Niantic Avenue, where a bunch of them surrounded some of the Providence police officers. I heard that, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, stuff like that has gone on for the last several years. Yeah. They may be getting kicked out of Providence, but they are not coming to Cranston. No. no. Folks, again, good evening on this Friday. It is Juan. It's Cranston PD Live. We're riding with Sergeant McHugh. Right now we're uh, Park Avenue. And what is, as many of you know, although we do have people from different states, other people watch it later on, watch it on other platforms, uh, YouTube, Spotify. Right now it is primarily Facebook Live, but it is um, very unusual. It's been uh, record-breaking heat here the no past two days. Here. Oh, all right. There we go. No oh, there we go. All right. There we go. A little Cranston PD Live party. All right. So that's different. Very, very nice. Thank you to everybody. Folks, thumbs up for the crowd. What, I didn't catch, what's the name of that place? That was uh, the Stadium Pub. Stadium Pub, all right. I think that used to be the old PC Lounge. So, but the Stadium Pub. 
might have to head there after this. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long week, and it's going to be a long weekend. So, but um, yes, thank you to everybody in the stadium pub. You know, I like the idea of that, though, having a Cranston PD live party watching us yeah. as we're going. <laughs> it's funny. I don't remember that many people saying uh, saying hi and coming out. Well, it's also warmer. It's so, is, yeah. And it also keeps getting more popular, but... It's just the cross to bear. <laughs> no, people are actually terrific. We'll take the support. Yes. We'll certainly take the support. Yep. That's funny. Stadium fish and chips. That looks. That sounds. It does sound good, as a matter of fact. I wonder if you can get a brew in there. At Stadium Fish and Chips. Yeah. At Stadium. Oh, do they sell? Do they, do they sell beer? Oh, all right. At Stadium Fish and Chips. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure. All right. I'm not sure. I don't right. think so. No. Okay. Definitely Stadium Pub. Yes. Okay. Wow, look at this. People already in line at Dell's. It's good for business. This weather is terrific, as a matter of fact. Gets everyone out. Folks, again, share. Yes, share that you're watching. Just a little after 7.30 on this Friday night. It's like a rolling parade. You kind of. <laughs> you're a big celebrity around here. Well, I think people just... People support the police. Again, folks, you can also um, share that you're watching. Make sure you follow the page. Sometimes people ask, how can I find out when you go live? And I, I'll, I will do some other shout-outs as the night goes along. But we used to do some of the different police departments, but then the list just took too long. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think I may start to just list them instead of rattle them off. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nope. All right, folks, share that you're watching. Oh. A G5 in front of Salton Watches on Reservoir 404002 Black Hyundai. All right, folks, here we go. How you doing? Oh, sorry, I forgot to put them on. Sorry, give your license registration for oh. insurance. How you doing? my mom. Okay. No drinking or anything no, like I that? No, I don't drink at all. Okay, perfect, Ever. perfect. I don't, I don't do that at all. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes, please. How's your driving record? Pretty good? Pretty good. I got two. Last year or two? Like a year, like last year. Okay. What was it for? I, I think one of them was. Okay. No, oh, this is it. You're oh, good. Thank you. Right. And the uh, registration? Registration? That was your insurance card. Oh, sorry. That's okay. No, no, mommy, he's talking to me. He's, you don't understand what he's saying, so don't worry. <laughs> 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 Alright, folks, here we go. Oh, 
Got it. All right. Just sit tight. I'll be back there. Sure, okay. okay. No I like that she says to him, no problem. Folks, we're in Reservoir Avenue. So I, I don't smell anything on her. I, I think she just forgot to turn the lights on. But we'll take a look at her driving record, see how it looks. So whatever violation she was talking about is actually now off her record, so her record is crystal clear. And I think we'll keep it that way. All right, folks, let's see the exchange with Sergeant McHugh again. Folks, share that you're watching. It's Cranston PD Live. It's Juan. Thank you for the stars if you uh, like the programming. All right, I take a look at your driving record, and actually that, uh, that sum is that you were talking about, it's actually off your record, so your oh, record's okay. clear. Yeah. So we're going to keep your record clear. I'm just going to issue a verbal warning. Just be a little more careful Thank next time. Thank you so okay? much. I appreciate it. All right, no problem. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. How would you describe her demeanor? She's quite pleasant, actually. Okay. And what about the mother? Well, I couldn't understand what she was saying, but she seemed all right. And that can go a long way. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And many times when someone does not have the lights on, it's a possibility it's because they're under the influence. Is that fair? Yes, that's correct. Especially on a Friday night around this time, it's not a bad idea to always ask somebody that you pull over if they've had anything to drink. Okay. But like I said, I, I couldn't smell anything on her. Her general operation was not bad when we were pulling her over. Yep. Not coming from the stadium pub. <laughs> not coming from the stadium pub. No. Believe it or not, the, uh, the guys that I work with are raving about their food, speaking of the stadium oh, pub. They okay. are, yeah. Well, Cranston PD Live is also good for commerce in the city. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, again, it's Friday night. We're with Sergeant McHugh. You can see it's starting to get darkness that is coming upon us. <laughs> Glad to hear that. I just like that they're having a Cranston PD Live party. <laughs> Folks, and we continue on. That's five ten eight. Sitting on a stolen vehicle on Oakland Avenue northbound. 211, now at Oakland and Blossom. Second flock hit. Okay. Still no, uh, now southbound. Southbound. Appreciate you. Correction, I hit the southbound camera, it's still northbound. Alright, so let's see if we can cut over in time and uh, catch up with that. S5, show me your stuff, please. Unfortunately, we're a little ways away from Oakwan Avenue, but um, it's heading northbound, then it sounds like they got some guys in the air. 
Looking for a white Camry. White Camry. Yep. Sam Boston 715. So now you can put me in the area check it. That's cool. Traveling north on, uh, traveling on Phoenix towards that one. 
Thanks for it. Nine o'clock. Eleven, I'm on uh, Wayland. I'm welcome. Ten four. Hey, what's your 20 now? We're at the light uh, over in Phoenix. Alright, 211 is going to be going westbound through the intersection. Yeah. Folks, here that you are watching. Watching Chris and Petey live in pursuit of a stolen vehicle. Joy. Joy. Yeah, I don't know what that vehicle in front of the Phoenix home care. Thank you. 200 block of Phoenix, Phoenix home care. That's what we told you. Folks, always be looking for first responders. You gotta pull over when you see police. I think we can. I'm going to wait for the uh, Sergeant McHugh asked us to just make sure that the, the, that it was secure, and we'll follow that. We're going to let them do the thing. As soon as he gives us the okay, hop out. Great job by Cranston Police. Folks, Four thumbs up. Three. Cranston Police in uh, getting the vehicle. Very impressive. Folks, again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. It is Juan. It is Friday night. And if you enjoy live stream, unscripted, unfiltered, programming like this as we like to say if everyone watching sends 200 stars we hit the metrics that facebook gives you so thank you to everyone in advance I'm just waiting for the thumbs up from the sergeant
interface with the detaining there's number one. We got one detained. We have the other officer. I think the other gentleman. Scene seems to be secure. Folks, again, good evening, everybody. It is Juan. We are uh, right on Phoenix Avenue. We have Cranston Police following up on a car that popped up. I want to show you the scene a little bit. As a stolen car, we have one individual. They're going to try to clear it up, get to the bottom of it. We're riding with Sergeant McHugh. So, um, the gentleman that is driving the car is... Hold on one The gentleman that's driving the car is a uh, employee of uh, one of our local car dealerships. And uh, that local car dealership is actually the, the one that put this car out stolen. So he's trying to explain that um, one of the benefits of his job is that uh, I guess they're able to rent cars at a discount if they're an employee. And all the paperwork actually does come back to that local car dealership. And he actually just showed me a pay stub from that local car dealership. However, I mean, we just can't take his word at that. So 
Uh, he's cooperated. He's pulled over. They've complied with everything the officers have asked. So we're giving him uh, the courtesy just to make a few phone calls and maybe with a little bit of luck we can reach somebody over at that car dealership that might be able to shed a little bit more light on this. So we do have one person detained though. Uh, we still have to treat it as a, a stolen vehicle and um, you know, hopefully we can sort this out uh, as soon as possible. All right, folks, there is the situation. I'm going to come over to the other side with Sergeant McHugh, Cranston Police. Folks, it's just about 8 o'clock. This individual a chance to try to rectify it. If it can be. Folks, just 8 o'clock in the east. It's Cranston PD Live. They're trying to get to the bottom of this uh, a car that came up stolen. You heard Sergeant McHugh give us a recap of exactly what this is all about. I think he, they may have reached the owner. I'm not sure.
Folks, again, good evening, everybody, on this uh, Friday night. Beautiful out. If you're watching Cranston PD Live, we are riding with Cranston Police Sergeant McHugh, and right now we're dealing with a vehicle that came up as stolen. Seems to be a dispute with the driver where they're claiming he's got some kind of an arrangement where he works. And I believe Cranston Police are trying to speak with the owner of the company to determine if that's true and why, in fact, did the vehicle uh, get reported stolen. So we have two Cranston police officers with the driver. We have, I believe, the passenger is detained. And then we have the sergeant and another officer, I believe, with the uh, on the phone, I think, with the owner of the car company. But the car did come up as stolen. You know, for those that are just tuning in, you can also, uh, if you go to the website, topetro.com, you can also catch up on some of the other episodes. I did post um, which episode this is, because even I got confused. This is episode 18, so if you do like watching unscripted police in this particular case, it's Cranston, Rhode Island, you can... Um, if you go to the website, tepetro.com, or it's also on the Facebook page, but either way, and you can, uh, this is episode 18. We started the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Yes. So you can see. Yeah. You can see Sergeant McHugh is on the phone. We'll, we'll get a full recap once he is done exactly you heard him say that they're trying to see if they can work this out otherwise I would imagine if it doesn't map out well we're gonna wait and see what's gonna happen folks again thank you everybody tonight um, all the different stars we're almost at 3,000 look at that watching from Asheville North Carolina good evening I think it's actually been warmer here than North Carolina so I hope also, um, I'll give a little commentary here, that uh, you can see that police are not just automatically taking them into custody and towing the vehicle. It certainly look like they're trying to work this out. He said he does have a pay stub from where he works, and they're trying to work it out with the owner. But the question would be, why, did the, why was the vehicle listed as a stolen vehicle? So we'll see what happens with uh, Sergeant McHugh's on the scene with the other Cranston police officers. We might as well do some shout outs. I want to give a shout out to, um, we have the Walpole Police, I'd like to enjoy watch, Massachusetts State Police, 
number the Cranston Police Department's watch. Let's see. Hollywood, Florida. Daytona. We're going to find out. Also, I want to say, um, let's see. Carmine, good evening to Carmine who watches. Uh, Ray, good evening to Ray Kelly who watches from Florida. We're going to find out from um, Sergeant McHugh exactly what the situation here is, folks. It sure sounds like they're trying to work this out. folks we'll give them the distance we'll give them the distance Again, nice night. Hi to Nancy McCormick. Still trying to find out when we can talk to Jane. Hi, Nancy. Let's see, Lenore. Kathy, who's now riding with Cranston Police. Give her a shout out. Who else? Allison. Caroline. Um, through this gentleman's manager from that uh, that large car dealership, that uh, he actually is an employee, and the uh, the manager, uh, knowing now that it was him that has the car, does not want to press charges. So she's actually on her way down here. She's local. So once we get a uh, a written statement from her that uh, she doesn't want to press charges, they'll be formally uh, released, and uh, they'll be free to go. And then um, the company is going to take care of that car. So we're just going to remain here and. You know, we'll make sure that she puts that in her statement, and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. All right, folks, that is the latest. Sergeant McHugh. So we, we do have an update. The owner of the car dealership is on our way here, as you just heard the sergeant say.
Alright, now we have some sirens here. That's a rescue. Alright, so folks, we are waiting for the owner now that's going to come and verify that it's not a stolen vehicle, and then maybe they can straighten out. And you just heard Sergeant McHugh say there needs to be a written statement that the vehicle is not stolen. So in the meantime, we're going to wait till that gets hashed out. Here's the other thing. If this is going to be straightened out, then I, I mean, I feel bad that we're... All right, looks like this individual's going to be released. All right, folks, now we have the two of them. I'm not sure which one's the driver, which one's the worker. Certainly detained here for a moment. The owner is on her way. Later that day, may be um, the uh, the manager wants to handle him administratively at work and uh, they want to take the car tonight so we'll see how that goes for him. <laughs> the, the, the manager's going to take the car or the owner's going to take the car? The manager oh. is coming down to take coming the down yeah. to take the car. She, said she wants to take the car so I, I don't know if she's going to have a, a pickup truck or, or whatever but um, I don't think she'll be releasing it to them. So. <laughs> doesn't sound too happy, but I mean, luckily for these guys, uh, you know, she doesn't want to press charges anymore. Do we know which one is the? Do they both work there, or one of them work there? Just the uh, the driver with the uh, on the right. The one that was detained in the vehicle. No, no, no. The one that was detained in the vehicle is a passenger. Yeah. Just be waiting for the manager to come. Yeah, we're just going to um, make sure we get everything in writing. And uh, once we do that, we'll be able to continue our night. And this is an interesting one. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and, and this is, you, you didn't automatically just go into tow mode, try to work it out with the owner of the company. Say that again? You, you didn't immediately just tow the vehicle and bring them in. It's trying to work it out, letting the manager come down to try to no, straighten certainly. it. certainly. You know, I talked to the officers, and, uh, you know, he pulled over immediately after um, uh, Officer Johnston uh, activated his emergency lights, and uh, they complied with the officer's uh, directions. So when somebody like that says, well, well wait a minute, you know, this, uh, this might be a, a miscommunication, you know, we're, we're always willing to listen and whatnot. Once we make sure that, you know, they're safe, that they don't have weapons on them, they're complying, so, but... 
and we'll see. You know, we, from a lot of the um, rent-a-car companies and whatnot, we usually take a lot of reports from them on stolen cars and whatnot. So, no, what happens to them once she takes the vehicle? I don't know if she wants to give them a ride. We're not giving them a ride. It's actually a beautiful night, so it's not a bad night to walk. But, um, I mean, that's up to them. I mean, they're not going to be detained. No, no. So, based on the behavior and the verbal indication from the manager, um, I let the uh, officer know he can let the uh, the passenger out. But, um, you know, technically, neither one's going anywhere until we get something in writing from that manager. Well, we're going to wait till she comes. We do, yeah. Sure. She's, uh, she's coming from the area of Marshalls on Oak Lawn. So she, she should actually be here uh, relatively soon. Yeah. All right. Now, folks, again, we are um, Sergeant McHugh. And um, Sergeant, there was also those um, flock cameras come in handy to pick up the, the, the plate. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, oh, they're very useful. So, you know. Solved tonight's incident. If before the... F oh, here comes a vehicle. This could be her. All right, folks, we'll go over, check out the manager. She went, yeah. Not everyone wants to be in a camera. <laughs> we'll honor that. Quite all right. We're not going to blur out their face. And we'll stay by the cruiser. We're going to let them resolve this. Again, folks, you're watching Cranston PD Live. It's Friday night. We had a report of a stolen vehicle. And we're going to see how this is uh, going to map out. There's the driver. There's the passenger. And the worker. The owner. Or the manager, excuse me. She was at Marshall's. We're not sure what she was purchasing. I am unaware if there's a sale. Just eight twenty two. And we are in Cranston. Again, if you missed any of the other episodes. And you can see some of the various things. Folks, I also want to just remind everybody that Coventry video has just taken off. If you've seen that, thumbs up if you've seen that. By the way, thumbs up. Happy Friday, one and all, folks. Here we are. Hope everyone enjoys it. Listen, it is it is unscripted. There's an ebb, ebb and flow to it. We're going to see where it goes. We are going to be riding with the various members of the Cranston Police Department. And then we also cover obviously some of the uh, the other departments again if you like the live programming if you say you know I like the live stream then the way you do show your appreciation is to send stars and I want to thank everyone people are very very supportive generous it's been a huge week for the program enormous week for the program there was also uh, funny I think say some more people we have a lot of people riding around and then waving so um, I as much as we appreciate it it it, um, well, that was funny at the stadium pub. So I don't know exactly what the... You know, it just occurred to me, it's not buggy yet, because it's still so early in the... It's still spring, but... We still have these two. Oh, wow, strong odor of weed just went by. 
And if you haven't seen it, the footage, the drone footage on the page is just wild. And we're the only ones that have it. That's an exclusive. I want to show you this is uh, some of the footage we have this on Facebook of these are the exit Exeter fire right is that playing yeah Exeter fire from earlier look at that that's from drone coverage folks just wild I keep hearing in the northern part of the state that one of the fires was started by some homeless people at a homeless camp, but I know people are sending that to me, but I don't have that official. I'm trying to get that nailed down from uh, DEM or isn't that a really impressive footage? And that is all from today. Great job by Damon Mark. Those Exeter fires. Terrible damage. Again, if you haven't seen it, it is on the Facebook page. And you can see that. We were also at the shooting in Providence last night. We were at the homeless woman that fo fell into the water. And now, right now, at 826 on this Friday night, April 14th, we are in Cranston with Cranston PD Live where we have the police are trying to resolve something with a stolen vehicle as we are waiting with Sergeant McHugh yes I have not heard enough about that yet but it's it's very possible I don't know it is terrible about the animals Boy, busy night tonight, folks. And actually, you know, it feels good to, to hear the motorcycles. At least it signifies that it's spring. Uh, I have not heard that. And I, I, I didn't hear that the Exeter fire started that way. Um, <laughs> I heard that. There were some fires in the northern part of the state, like off Branch Avenue in Providence, and I heard that's what that was. That's who started them, I should say, but I don't know. We'll find out. We'll get a report from the sergeant. Again, thank you, everybody. I don't know exactly, but we're going to find out. It's the patient one. Okay. Oh, good. Someone is, um, who sent me that? Let's see. Nope. Brittany says all the horses and everybody made it out. Oh, good. It's funny. Oh, good. I love that. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley's dog loves watching it. <laughs> Folks, you can post your pets watching it or yourself. Try to post that. There is Ashley's dog watching Cranston PD Live. Luna. Luna loves Cranston PD Live. Look at that. <laughs> She's at Marshall's, apparently.
Thank you, by the way, all our new subscribers. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they know that I'm very tight with young Rumsfeld. These guys are just chatting on the phone. 8.30 in the east. Is she showing them what she got at Marshall's? I'm not sure. <laughs> we are dealing with a reported stolen car. And they're trying to work it out with the manager of whatever business this is. Now, earlier... Thank you again for the stars tonight, everybody. Um, earlier, Sergeant McHugh took that knife off that guy. We're going to find out. I saw the footage. I'm going to see if we can release the footage. It was a huge knife that this guy had on him. Tra uh, unfortunately, it was right before we went live. But it's been a busy day in Cranston. One thing about Cranston, of which the city I grew up in, my hometown, Edgewood, very, as you can tell, folks, very proactive police force. We also want to say uh, big shout-outs to Danbury, Connecticut Police been watching. Greenwich Police, good evening to them. Also the Boston Police Department, thank you. Been dealing with them for several months now, since the fall. So Tom's River Police Department, watch the program. She's still at Marshall's, or is she here? <laughs> hmm. So the manager. Oh, I think she's writing out a statement. Is that an ATV? No, it's a bike rider. Just a reminder, everybody. Let me, um, you know, we have not. Here we go. Good evening, everybody. It is Juan. Here we are. Cranston PD Live. Folks, good evening, one and all. It's Friday night. Now it's dark. Thank you, everyone. Thumbs up if you are enjoying it. Hey, listen, there's an ebb and flow. They have to go through all the process of it. You know, I think this is a, a very good demonstration. It shows proper demeanor. Police are, 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 you know, attempting to resolve this instead of being in a heavy-handed approach of any way. Um, I want to also, can we just show... That I have uh, one has his tactical gear on. You can see there it is, folks. The the full tactical gear because we never know what we may, in fact, encounter. Who knows if we could get someone uh, in tight spandex pants who wants to drive a truck? We don't. We don't know. Like that particular person. That video is over six hundred thousand views of the woman please everybody back up please back up please back up god it was like the sister mary elephant please back up please back up i'm on private property public property please back up good evening everybody there's some people waving at Juan. folks here we are we're with Sergeant McHugh. <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm telling you. As many of you know, Juan cannot speak for the Cranston Police Force, but I want to tell you folks, the number one thing I have heard from every different police department, nothing against Coventry, 
but I've heard from, I'm not going to mention Cranston, but I've heard from, in no particular order, Woonsocket, Providence, Newport, Warwick, North Providence, North Kingstown, um, who else did I talk to? State Police, all said they, <laughs> they would have arrested that individual in, in about, like, two seconds. I mean, that was... All right, here we go. So the, uh, is she still at Marshall's? No, that's actually her. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, sorry about the delay. Um, so after we were sorting this whole thing out, so uh, the guy that I thought was driving it, the employee of that uh, large car company, he's actually just a passenger, so his, his friend was driving it. But we do not believe that the friend had any knowledge that he was, in fact, driving a stolen car. However, um, the manager here, as stated before, d does not want to pursue charges, but she's actually going to um, let him know right now what his uh, job status is, which is not going to be great. So we'll, uh, we'll stand by, just make sure that everything remains peaceful. Uh, we have to inform him that uh, he is formally trespassed from this uh, car dealership's uh, property here in the city of Cranston. And... Uh, that should be that. Okay. So, uh, she is. I I don't think she. Uh, I think she might need a little space, but she will be. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. I'll be right back. Sure. Do your thing. All right, folks. So that's what's going on. I think this is the first person who's seen fired on Cranston PD Live. How, how long have you worked here for the company, not counting today? Good news, you have Monday off. Bad news is you have Tuesday off as well. Juan's doing a little ad lib. Can everybody please back up? Sister Mary Elephant in Coventry. I'm just glad that woman didn't make the situation worse. Well, if anyone's watching, apparently there's a job opening at a car company in Cranston. If anyone's looking to hire, it looks like we have someone who may be in need of employment. Can everybody please back up? Please back up. Oh, and they're on their way. They're escaping. Now, are they fugitives? Oh, there they go. I should try to catch up with them. Maybe we'll do a new live stream called either Stolen Car or Rhode Island's Unemployment. Hmm. All right, well, we'll see. Folks, if you enjoy humor, 200 stars. Oh, are they getting a ride? Oh, okay, maybe they called somebody for a ride. Oh, maybe that's a stolen car. Wait a minute, she's got stretch pants on. Everybody, please, back up. You've got enough. You can get your shot from over there. Huh. I have good news and bad news. Good news is you have Monday off. Oh, what's the bad news? Uh, you also have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off. Ah, uh, folks, Juan is in rare form. What a week. You know what a week it is? I, I don't remember where we went Wednesday night. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I think she just ironed out. Uh, oh, hold on one second. There we go. So it sounds like uh, his job status has been uh, relayed to him. Uh, he's no longer allowed on that uh, that property. Uh, should he Monday off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So should he he uh, trespass on that property, uh, he actually will be arrested. 
So I think someone picked them up. I don't know if they had a ride or not, but um, I mean they were they were free from the scene, oh, so they're not no, no, nope, they're all set. They're all set. That's been relayed to them. Yeah, so uh, she's taking custody of the car, and um, you know, we're back on the road. There we go. All right. This was an interesting. Yeah, I can imagine. This was Sorry that took so long. No, come on. Something like that yes. Is it still Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Well, one of the officers came up to me and he's like, uh, why does everybody keep beeping at us? Oh, like, it's because of the We have one in the car. Yes. I told them about it. There we are. I told them. Um, right. Everybody's got to stop doing that. That's a distraction. <laughs> But it does show support for law it, enforcement. It does, so. it does. I said we keep parking. Alright. Already? We are rolling. Folks, here we go. Alright, so normally. Now we're off to Mar are we we are not going to Marshalls. No, no, no. she came here, so uh, <laughs> we don't have to go down to Marshalls or anything. Like Alright. That's fine, Timmy. But that is that is really strange. I, mean, uh, I don't think I. He was not that. promoted. Uh, no. Well, hey. Oh boy. I think we're starting a trend here. Yeah. Um. No. Uh, certainly not promoted. Not employee of the month. No. No cupcakes in the break room. All right, we got the idea of it. <laughs> you know that's interesting though. Uh, employer and employee. Wow. And his friend driving the vehicle. To boot. The friend had absolutely no record. I, I do not believe that he knew what was going on. And when um, when Stephen initially described the uh, what was going on, he tried to explain that it was a, uh, a benefit of his job that he would have like a discounted rate at um, a rental car. His car is uh, allegedly in another shop. So. The, the manager was unfamiliar with that perk. Yeah, I don't think the oh. perk is exactly as yes, he was describing it. Okay. So, well, unfortunately, uh, it sounds like it cost him dearly. But, I mean, we, we take stolen car reports. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pretty frequently. And we get a lot of um, overdue motors from like Hertz Enterprise and that sort of thing. But I don't remember a case where the suspect that was actually driving the vehicle was a current employee. So this, this was definitely a, not counting today. Well, not counting today. Yeah. <laughs> that obviously <laughs> that's changed. But no, she she did not want to press uh, charges on it. Wanted to handle it administratively. Kind of an old joke. How long have you been working here? Not counting today. Oh, oh boy, careful. Looks we're on Park Avenue. Again, it is Juan. We're with Sergeant McHugh. Two Two Can you saw me in a and I'm just coming. She, the manager also had someone with her that was then driving that vehicle, that seemed to be. The person then she, that was in her car is yeah. driving her car, okay. and uh, she's driving the uh, the company car. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Sergeant, in the past, trying to locate a stolen car, I mean, that, before the flock came, or how difficult was that just trying to, you know, maybe catch a plate or the, just the make and models that's going by? Very difficult, I would imagine. They were notable arrests. I mean, wow. to, to get a stolen car yeah. before, uh, wow. you know, having the flock here in the uh, oh. city of Cranston, you know, it, wasn't as easy. easy. No, 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 certainly not. It was definitely a, uh, a when you heard about the arrest, you just, oh, yeah. you know, what happened there? Wow. How did that happen? But, I mean, this uh, this system has certainly changed the way that we uh, that we operate, especially when it comes to stolen cars. Um, missing persons, we've had a lot of cases of missing persons actually solved through the flock. Mm. So, that silver alert from earlier, um, we had an idea of where she was at, um, at 12:30, because that car actually hit on one of our uh, flock cameras. Wow! So we knew that she was still in the city of Cranston. Okay. So, but it, it is very helpful. Very helpful. Even game changer as it was making its way through the city, we were hearing, you know, north and Oakland, blah blah blah. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like that's fantastic. Yeah. I also want to point out to people uh, that may or may not be aware, but Cranston very proactively embraced, I think is a good word, the flock cameras. Now other cities are doing it. Yes. So, yep. but Cranston, I believe, was the first local city that we really embraced it, and then other departments could not believe the numbers. No. So. I know I'm, you're going to be modest about it, but I, I do know of another, another police department. I won't say which one, but they said they thought they had a good month, that they had <laughs> had three three or four stolen cars, and then Cranston had over 50 in one month. Yeah. So, huge, huge difference. It's been a game changer, no doubt yeah. about it. Too bad they seem like good guys. <laughs> the suspects. They were cooperative. Yeah. yeah, I mean we definitely appreciate right. people that are cooperative. cooperative. Um, right. You know, like I said, when the officers uh, first got the vehicle stopped, they they pulled over, they listened to the officers. Yeah. Um, you know that's why we we started to hear them out, and you know it was certainly it worth like a legitimate into. story. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, um, I wouldn't say that uh, his uh, entire account of you know the benefit of being able to take a vehicle. I don't think that was uh, certainly entirely accurate. But yeah. um, you know they, they were definitely cooperative, and we were willing to hear them out, and which led us to contacting the manager, who indicated to us that she didn't want to press uh, formal charges in this matter, being that it was actually one of her uh, employees. Wow. So, which is actually, you know, obviously I. He was trespassed from all their property and whatnot, and uh, you know the status of his job is probably what you could imagine it would be. Still a bad night for him, but you know she actually did do him a huge favor by not pursuing the matter formally. So he still lost tonight, but not as yeah. bad, not as bad as if she no. had uh, pursued everything. All right. Pocket prospect mass for Boston victim Nancy Chewy. You know, to be honest with you, too, he's very lucky that. Uh, the manager was able to pick up because when he was explaining everything to me I told him like that particular uh, you know, car company was closed normal business hours mm. so he's very lucky she picked up because when people put out stolen cars they indicate in formal reports that um, they indicate that they uh, they have to press charges that's actually a what the, it's, it has to be done before it's put into the National Crime Information Center. So. Okay. That's part of it. Yeah, had we not, um, had we not, uh, gotten that, we would, it, the car never would have been put out stolen, so. Initially, I guess she didn't believe that, uh, that he was the one in possession of it. Oh, wow. She told me she had a, uh, an inkling that it might have been, but. Huh. She just thought she had a stolen vehicle. And didn't realize it was one of the employees. Yeah. Oh, she's 
much. Wow. Send it. Victory just in from Plot, Samuel 153. That's that one. Again, good evening everyone on this Friday. You're watching Crints and PD Live at his one. We're with Sergeant McHugh. It's been a very busy night, as you can tell. Please share that you're watching. You can also um, type in someone's name. That should notify them. Tune in. Make sure you follow the page. You, you've had a busy night before we even started riding. Yeah. Yep. People are asking what time is your shift? And what time do you come in and what time do you leave? So normally, so I'm on the split shift now. So I actually work uh, two second shifts from uh, 245 to 1045. And then my last two days are actually on the day shift now. Um, which is nice because uh, my I just started my 15th year in March, and I've never been assigned to day shift. So to be able to be home, have dinner with my family, my kids yeah. has been wonderful. Wow. So, but I still enjoy the evening shifts, and uh, you know, during our last uh, ride along, I was telling you, you know, one of my passions is a uh, DUI, DRE instructor, right. SFST instructor, and uh, it's definitely something I always like to remain proactive with. Um, so it still enables me to do that a, a good amount. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. What, what's the level of DUIs recently in the city, or this for, for this year? You know, I actually I don't know what our statistics are for the year, okay. but after reading our daily shift bulletins, it definitely seems like we're, our numbers are up right now. Mm. Up, not down. Wow. Yeah. I think some of that is also maybe the introduction of cannabis, or or is there maybe there's any any well, well you just came out on St. Patrick's Day in March Madness. Cool, so. <laughs> well, the large majority of our uh, DUIs are still um, just alcohol influenced. Yeah. So I think in order to kind of like really uh, understand the statistics and something like that, maybe at the end of the year. But for right now, I'm. I actually don't know uh, what our statistics are for drug influence versus alcohol influence for like a yearly total as of now. But in the past, it's it's hovered around like fifteen percent. That tells me that's going to be on the rise. Most likely, yeah. that's what they're preparing for at least statewide. Right. Mm. DUIs, is it? people a night out is it I, I still like what part is it or is it always a different situation no pattern to it are they are they kids are they people with drinking problems are they people just drinking too much at dinner or I just think people uh, think they have the ability to drive home when they don't yeah so I the large majority of DUIs are people uh, of age. I mean, we've had people that are underage. I've, I had somebody that was uh, 20 years old this year oh, driving under the influence. But. Cool. So you can see this guy is kind of straddling the line a little bit. Yeah. Do you want to challenge him? Go to Chicago. One also. One's also available. Two, thank you. S5. S5. Put me on a G5, Arlington Ave, just in Francis Street. 367 You were left of the double yellow line? Yeah, because I had to cross here. My okay. finger, uh, uh, 
I, I say I'm sorry for Okay, all right. But yeah, I have everything. Um, no. No, I don't. I don't have. One. You don't have one. Huh? You don't have one. No. Okay. Do you yeah. live on the street? Excuse me. Yeah, I live here. All they, right. they live here, and then we come to eat something here. Okay. All right. I'll, do you have any identification or? Yeah, yeah, but but yeah. No, no license. Okay. I appreciate your honesty. No, th thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much. I say I'm sorry. We we not we not drink. I we we are person. We yeah. church person. You said no drink tonight? No, 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 we're not drink. We, we are a church, uh, how do you say? Uh, we, church going? Church, church, we are church, a member church. We are church in Bolucre. I don't, I don't know how do you say. Okay. Yeah, right. I, don't, I don't drink. We, 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 we stopped drink many, 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 many times ago. Okay. When I was young, drink. Now, All right. now, no drink. Yeah, this is my, my, my one ID. And, and, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take them both. You take them both? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been uh, stopped? Excuse me. Have you ever been stopped by the police before? Uh, yeah, but for the same thing, you know, for for they stop sometimes check. I in, in Newport one time, but he forgive to me. I say I come to work. You know, we, we yeah. work in this company. Okay. And uh, yeah, they stop to me, but they don't they don't they don't make nothing to me. Okay. They forget to me. You Do know? you have the uh, the registration on the car and the insurance? Can, can I can I go back? I can look it up on the computer if it's not readily accessible. No, no, you, be, be, no, because uh, you know what happened? Yeah. I I go to the I go to somewhere out the immigra immigration uh, appointment and and I put in my box mm -hmm. my passport and and everything and 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 I, and I this is you you I can say to you this is uh, Araceli Noguera. He live in the Araceli Noguera is the name. It's not my car. Okay. Araceli Noguera, mm -hmm. and she lives in 92 okay. Waldo Street. You can see in the plate. Okay. Can you do that, please, for me? Yeah, I can run the plate on okay. the computer for you. Uh, okay. Araceli Noguera, she mm -hmm. lives in 92 Waldo Street. Okay. And I say to you, forgive me, please. Okay. All right. Is it a... This is a... Con is it Oscar? Consul. Yeah, Oscar. And now I see Oswaldo Flores Garcia. Yeah. So wh which one is your last name? Uh, fr uh, Flores Garcia. Flores Garcia. Is there a hyphen in between those? Say again? Is is there a line, a dash, or is it no dash, no hyphen? Uh, I don't understand that. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll look it up. All right, sit tight. I'll be back to you in a minute, okay? Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was honest. Registered owner is the person that he was talking about. The vehicle is actively registered. So I'm just going to run him now and 100% uh, verify that he does not have a uh, license. What are they saying? Big fans of yours? Yeah. This is becoming a problem. Sometimes it's like you get too big. Just with them. Hey, have a good day. Looks a lot of want fans tonight. A lot of wannabes. All right, here we go. Hey, 
Hey, what's up, Peter? Yeah, it should be good. Thanks, I appreciate it. Folks, again, it's Friday night. You're watching Cranston PD Live. It was uh, quite an exchange. Sergeant McHugh, we're going to let him do his thing. I also want you to notice how the uh, other Cranston police came and backed him up. So we're right off of Cranston Street. like a very nice gentleman and we also have the people on the stoop that are watching <laughs> folks thank you everybody for tuning in Also, thank you. What are we at? 3,600 stars. If we could do 400 more, we're going to be at 4,000 stars. And then, uh, yeah, he did actually. Seems like a very nice man. I think he has a young passenger. We'll see how Sergeant McHugh is going to handle this. Folks, again, um, thank you everyone for, I mean, what a week this has been. But I want you to know, thumbs up, if you would like to see Cranston PD Live every week, do a thumbs up right now, subscribe to the page, show your support. I think it's great, as many of you know, that I think uh, support for law enforcement is coming back. We have been leading the charge. It is like summertime. You can hear the different, like some kind of an argument going on in the apartment, but we're not going to get involved in that. Folks, it's actually, it is cooled down, and it seems like it's turning into a pleasant night. Now, we're going to be, um, we're going to be, uh, leaving momentarily, or short, in a short time, but then, um, we will be monitoring the news. All right, let's see how this is going to, turn out. One thing we know, people in Cranston are watching. May have to go undercover from now on. Like when I Johnny Hockey knows we went the undercover with the biker gang. I had a fake mustache, Juanito. 
watching in Lakewood. Oh, good. Home of Warrack. Summer tour coming up. Warrack, the band they couldn't stop. I heard they're going to be doing a reunion show at the Warwick Musical Theater. Warrack. All right, it's 9.05 in the East. Again, good evening, everybody. You're watching Cranston PD Live. I think the fires are out. <laughs> what a state. Wait, Governor McKee's really... All right, I won't do political commentary. Thank you, Ashley, and her dog. Yes, there are fires all over Rhode Island. I, I cannot confirm that. I have these people trying to say that um, I think homeless people are starting them. I, I, I don't have any confirmation on that. I think it's just rumor at this point. I, I don't, I'll, I'll say this, um, just from, a, I, it, it's possible there have been some fires in Providence, but I don't believe uh, Exeter or North Smithfield. Again, I don't know, but I, I have no idea if there's um, homeless encampments there. All right, I think the sergeant is resolving this. And then we're going to go to Marshall's with the manager. Uh, it's like a CVS receipt. <laughs> Seems to be. I'm going to find out. All right, let's see how it gets resolved. Let's see if prayer worked. So you're just going up the street, right? Yeah. And then you're parking your car? Yeah. Okay. All right, listen, I'm just writing you a citation for driving without a license, okay? I, I did a check of you. It looks like you, you've been stopped for this thing, yeah, thing I, before, I, okay? Get, get, so hold on a second. You have a, uh, a court date on May 23rd, 9 o'clock in the morning at a Rhode Island Traffic Tribunal, okay? Yeah, I, I forget to say about my nervous, you know, that, because my license, I, I can fix it because... They they have stopped to yeah. me. You can you can get a license. Yeah, okay? yeah, but, so but you just have to pass the road test and everything else. Yeah, like that yeah, but the, the, the thing is, I am waiting for my paper. But, okay. but, but you you but shouldn't you, be, you you shouldn't a, be you, driving until you get the license. Excuse okay? me. You, you give me a, you give me a call. You, you have to go to a Rhode Island traffic tribunal. Rhode Island what? Traffic tribunal. That is a court. It's traffic court. It's not like an arrest. Like if this was last year or the year before, um, you could be arrested for this, but. Right. Yeah, th it, they changed the law, so it's actually okay. just a violation for you now, okay? It's a, but, but I have to go to the but you court. You have to go to court, and you have to answer to the judge why you were driving without a license, okay? So, when I, like I said, when I initially stopped you, okay, you were, you were left of the double yellow line. I'm not writing a $95 citation for that. You're getting a break on that, okay? You just give me a break? Yep, just on that. So, it's not a $95 violation. Okay. All you have to do is appear on this court date, May 23rd, okay? But I have to go to... to you that. actually have to physically go to court. Okay. Yes, traffic tribunal. Okay. And what is that? What other? The address is right here. It's uh, it's on New London Avenue. Okay, six seventy New London Avenue. In Providence. In Cranston. Oh, Cranston. Yeah, it's the big. It's right by DMV. Okay. Okay. So when you uh, when you reach your destination up up the street. In the end, yeah. Yep. You can't drive anymore. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Enjoy the rest of your night. All right. Okay. All right, folks. There we go. Let me just take this off.
So after uh, checking a history of him, he actually has been stopped for this sort of thing before. Mm. And it doesn't look like he uh, he rectified the problem. So, yeah. Um, he was issued a uh, citation for that. Do we, do we know country of origin? No. 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 Seems like a nice thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, compliant. Yeah, little bit of a language barrier, but um, I think he understood everything that I was saying. It looked like well, he was trying to turn left too early. That's why I think he was well, only putting the double yellow light. Oh, well, uh, check seven Adams Street. I did not smell on anything on him. Black green Mustang pulled up in the driveway, two males at the house. House is for sale, but they walk around the house. 2700 series, seven adults. Jump. Two or nine to follow. He lives on this street. I guess um, okay. his family on this street. So, okay. uh, rather than tow his vehicle, right? You know, I decided to let him just drive. Right he time. can't. Yeah. yeah. And it is a game changer with the licenses now. Yeah, they keep changing it. Yeah. So, um, a couple years past, they changed it to third or subsequent offense as a misdemeanor, mm. and. Uh, now the the legislator changed it so now in 2023 it's uh, fourth or greater is a dis misdemeanor but like five years ago uh, anything was a misdemeanor it was you can't drive on a suspended license or without it so right. so I gotta start I actually still gotta wrap up on that earlier Understood. arrest yeah, yeah. Yep. Folks, again, we want to thank Sergeant McHugh. What a great, memorable night, sir. So, <laughs> I hope, I hope could it was we ride again with you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Yeah, so, that's fine. Folks, again, thumbs that's up. Lieutenant. Sergeant McHugh. He's got some other things he has to I work on. I with me earlier in the night. Yeah, that would have so been a good one. Well, maybe we'll start early next time. Folks, again, uh, thank everybody for tuning in. Again, Chris and PD Live, if you'd like to watch some of the other episodes, they're all on the website petro.com that we also have them also posted on YouTube and then they are on the Facebook page so I believe we're going to check with Commander Padalano but I think this will be a weekly occurrence again it is a Friday night I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in and again thank you Sergeant excellent very good night. all right thanks very I'm glad you enjoyed it folks there it is all right we're going to uh, sign off from Cranston and again this uh, program tonight dedicated Jane Rice. Hoping she's feeling better. Thank you to Roberta, David Sammartino, and everybody. And we're going to say good night on this Friday night. Stay safe, everyone, from Cranston. <laughs>